So depending on who you talk to, this is one of the most popular cartoon series in Canadian history. What other people call it one of the worst. Uh, the relationship with, uh, between Hercules and Newt, in a way, has been referred to. Kids in the Hall might be a little bit, uh, little bit gay, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Just that the series and the animation and everything else is <clears throat> for a for a fan of Warner Brothers <coughs> and Disney is quite irritating. But like for what it was, it uh, it did well in syndication, did well internationally, and put Canada on the map for that type of animation, like the action and adventure. Now, the Mighty Hercules is an animated TV series based loosely on the Greek mythology character of Hercules under his Roman name Hercules. It debuted on TV in 1963 in syndication. The show ran until 66, coinciding with the sword and sandal genre of films popular between the 58 and 65 across North America. Each standalone episode runs five and a half minutes, and in syndication was aired either as part of a block with other cartoons or with several episodes airing consecutively to avail 30-minute time slots. Now, the cartoon features uh, Hercules, a legendary hero who dwells on Mount Olympus, Villains threaten the people of ancient Greece, often the kingdom of Caledon, and Hercules comes to the rescue. When in serious danger, he puts on a magic ring, which gives him superpowers. Once he puts a ring on and raises his fists, flashes of lightning, referred to as Thunder of Zeus in several episodes, strike the ring, and Hercules is then endowed with super strength. He does battle with numerous nemesis, such as Daedalus, an evil wizard who's the chief villain, sometimes accompanied by his pen cat uh, Dido, other villains include uh, Wilhelmine, the sea witch, accompanied by her pet bird Elvira, and Mirtis, who is invulnerable because he wears an iron helmet known as the Mask of Vulcan, long before uh, Star Trek. Now, Hercules' friends and allies include uh, Newton. Hercules, my Hercules! <laughs> Don't even want to get into it. A man, his main uh, sidekick, a helpful boy, Senator, who calls Hercules Herc and has a habit of repeating himself every time he speaks. Again, uh, slightly irritating. Uh, Helena, Hercules' girlfriend. Prince, later King Dorian of Caledon. Toot, a small satyr who vocalizes only by playing his syrinx. Timo, a young human from Caledon. And Pegasus, Hercules' a wigged, a winged steed. Also featured atop Mount Olympus are Hercules' father Zeus and uh, Dodonis with his crystal rock of seeing. Both often warn Hercules of the troubles going on down below, in and around the kingdom of Caledon, or deep in a learned learn Ayan forest. Now, the original episode was relatively lavish animation by John uh, Gentilia. In it, Hercules beats his friend, uh, friend Theseus in a foot race in a wrestling match, and for his victory, Zeus rewards him by promising to grant any quest Hercules makes. Hercules, he wishes to go to work to fight evil and injustice, but Zeus reminds him that going to Earth would cause him to lose his powers and uh, become a mortal human. Zeus then creates a magic ring that allows Hercules access to his godly strength while on Earth. The rest of the episode involves Hercules meeting Helena and fighting a giant named Cacus and the giant's pet dragon. None of the other familiar characters make an appearance in the episode, and it features different character designs for Hercules and Helena. Now, the show generally used Greek myths as the ins inspiration for its episodes, but used the influences oddly. Daedalus is an evil wizard who is Hercules' most frequent foe in the cartoon, but in Greek mythology, Daedalus was a skilled artisan who was rarely villainous. Cacus, the giant in the first episode, is based on the mythological monster Cacus. Often, other recurring creatures such as the Nemean lion, the Lernian hydro, the er er Man Manthean boar, and the stim, uh, stimph alien birds were taken directly from the Twelve Labors of Hercules, but unlike in the Twelve Labors, most of the creatures are not presented in the cartoon as trials for Hercules to overcome. In addition to the ring, later episodes added new equipment for Hercules these friends use, such as a moonstone beam in his belt and an invulnerable sword and shield. Episodes invariably ended with Hercules racing towards Mount Olympus and shouting Olympia after defeating the villain over and over and over again. Now, adventure cartoon productions made the Mighty Hercules in connection with Transluck Television, the same company that later brought the Japanese anime series of Speed Racer to the States. The company produced 120 episodes of the Mighty Hercules, each about five and a half minutes in length. Joe, uh, Joe Oriolo was a producer and director, and many of the animators were veterans of the New York City animation scene, including those for D DC Comics. Now, uh, 
The show featured two different sets of voices for the characters. The most noticeably different voice was that of Newton. His original voice sounds as though he was just hit puberty, with his voice constantly cracking, while the later episodes gave him a high-pitched Mickey Mouse-like voice. There is no gradual change in the voices. Most of the early episodes have the first set of voices, and the rest have the second set. And in the seventh episode during the first season, Double Trouble, the voices actually changed during the episode. With Newton near the end of the episode speaking line, his original crackling voice, and his very next line switching to his second high-pitched voice. Ironically, ladies and gentlemen, in an early episode of the first season, voice actor David Hartman, who later hosted the TV uh, talk show Good Morning America, voices Hercules before a different actor takes over for the remainder of the series' run. The money Hercules always credits Jimmy Tapp as the voice of Hercules, despite Hartman's early portrayal of the character. The series credits Daedalus' voice, depending on the episode, to Jack Mercer or Jerry Bascom. Early episodes also feature Mercer voicing Newton and other incidental characters. The voice actress for all the female voices is Helen Nickerson. The animation for a sequence of Hercules putting on and charging up his magic ring also changed subtly, subtly along with the voices. The episodes of Minotaur and the Chair of Forgetfulness provide good examples of the first set of voices and the first version of the ring sequence, while the episodes of Nemean Lion and the Chameleon Creature are good examples of the second set of voices in a later ring sequence. Now, ironically, a superstar singer uh, did the theme song, the great Johnny Nash, the American reggae singer-songwriter, best known for 56, A Very Special Love, and 72's massive worldwide hit, while it, I can see clearly now, uh, the rain as well. The theme music is credited to Winston Sharples as Wind Sharples, who in more than two decades at Paramount had composed background music for Superman, and Popeye theatrical cartoons produced by Fleischer. While the theme's lyrics were written by Sharple's sons Winston, now under the pseudonym Win Singleton, his first and second middle names. Now, the transformative ring anthem, frequently used as Hercules, slips on his magic ring, along with several bridges of music used throughout the episodes, were taken from the 54 film The Black Shield of Foul Work, with the music credit to uh, Joseph Ger- Gershon Song but actually composed by Hans J. Sattler, Herman Stein, and Frank Skinner, the longtime you know, house composers for Universal Studios. Now, in 2005, the Hermione Hercules were reissued to television in a newly remastered version that was reformatted, with new title music performed by an unidentified singer, replacing Johnny Nash's theme music. The version that aired in the Canadian network, Teletoon Retro, used the original Nash uh, theme music. Now, uh, in 63, Golden Records released a tie-in LP record for children entitled The Murder of Her- Body Hercules with words and music by William Tra- Winston Sharples. Now, in 2009, the Canadian jazz musician John Stetch covered a theme song for The Mighty Hercules on his album TV Trio. Now, when doing Superman the Animated Series, Bruce Tim was inspired design of Hercules and what became designed for Superman in the show. Now, on October 4th, 2011, Classic Media, now DreamWorks Classics, brought the series to DVD for the first time with a single disc selection entitled The Mighty Hercules in Region 1. All 20 episodes were from Season 1, the last one being uh, Episode uh, 40, and again uh, appeared on television in syndication from September 1st, 63, all the way to May 1st, 1966. Now, again, it's an acquired taste because you uh, you got to be a certain age. There's no way, like Rock and Robin Hood, this had as much as an appeal. But like I said, uh, uh, just uh, uh, Newt was one of the most irritating characters in cartoon history for Canadians. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, whether you want to see the gay subtext or not, he was just fucking irritating. <laughs> like I said, for a lot of people listening to this, they're probably saying, is he going to talk about how Newt was so irritating and was one of the worst uh, it would be shown uh, on with the, between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. in New Brunswick uh, right before school would start. So, we would, And it was replaced by edited versions of Looney Tunes in most jurisdictions, so a weird syndication. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rock and Robin Hood, CBC, this was syndication. If you watched that growing up, you're better than me because if you could stand... You could stand Rock and Robin Hood, but you couldn't stand the Monday Hercules. But again, for what it was... It was the best of its time, and, uh, you know, it drew the popularity of the Hanna-Barbera TV cartoons that came later because people wanted it better. 
So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here, we're a vintage uh, TV podcast. Let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share.